If you're looking for what to do in Tokyo, you're in the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the best out of one day in Tokyo. We're starting our morning at the Tsukiji Fish Market. If you want to, you could get up before dawn and check out the auction. But we don't want to be sleepy throughout the day, so we're starting at 8 o'clock instead. It's so cool. It's right behind the fish market. Oh, look at this place. It's a very, very reasonable price in all of Tsukiji Market. Let's go inside and check it out. Today, we're gonna have fresh sashimi bowl for breakfast at Taneichi. I ordered tuna, salmon, and negitoro. And Maiko got the ladies bowl and a side of uni. Alright, let's try the first bite. Mm. Super fresh. That's really good. All right, let's walk around Jogai Market. There are so many food stands here, so don't fill up your stomach too much at breakfast. Look, they even have shumai. Tsukiji Market sure has a long history, but you can tell by the, all the old school buildings. So yeah, this is a very, very old fish market, but there's actually a new building that was just built, which has a lot of stores, restaurants, and it, like you can go up to the third floor pretty cool place. Now let's move on to the Imperial Palace. Take Kibiya line and transfer at Kayabacho station to the Tozai line and get off at Otomachi station which is the closest station to the Imperial Palace tour starting spot. Be sure to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early because the tour starts at 10. Just behind me this is where they have the tours. They have them mainly on every day from 9 30 to 1 o'clock. It lasts about two hours and they take the first 300 people first come first serve. Behind me you can see there's like this beautiful park kind of tree grass area. Unfortunately you can't actually go inside. You just have to like view because it's all fenced off. The Imperial Palace grounds are so big. Check out all this space around me. So much space out here. I love it. It's perfect. And the bridge is pretty cool too. Look at that. So this is cool. Well, we're actually walking through Sakura Damon Gate. It's like they actually had a war here. And if you just look right behind me, right there, this is where they have cherry blossoms during cherry blossom season. It's so beautiful. Definitely check it out. If you're also going for a run, this is where the runners pass. Next, walk about seven to eight minutes and check out Tokyo Station. Oh. We just made it to Tokyo Station. It's pretty central here in Tokyo, obviously. A lot of bullet trains or Shinkansen roll through here. They renovated the facade a few years ago, so it's pretty new. Yeah, it doesn't even look like Japan sometimes when I look at it. And it's just right next to the Imperial Palace, which is pretty cool. As you can see, right behind me is Tokyo Station, all right there. And if I just flip this way, just down this road is the Imperial Palace. So close. Now we're moving on to Ueno Station, but before that, let's check out what we can find inside of Tokyo Station. The Shinkansen leads from here, so there are countless souvenir shops and bento stores. Just right behind me, there's just really, really cool bentos at this place. I'd definitely check it out if you can. Now, Let's have lunch and snack at Ameya Yokocho, aka Ameyoko, as locals call it. So this is like Tokyo's version of like a street market. They have like stores here that sell relatively inexpensive goods like t-shirts and clothing, pants. But you can also have like street market food at a fair like market price. This is like very similar to what we found in Kuromon in Osaka. We just make food, but there's just not a lot of these stalls. It's like a one time only kind of thing. So many restaurants here that you can eat outside and like order food. Pretty freaking cool. Uh, Maratan? Uh, Maratan? <laughs> What really surprised us was that there's a lot of Chinese food stalls here. It's amazing. We got chicken, pig ears, and even soup. Food is very, very affordable. If you come to Ueno, you might want to set aside some stomach for not maybe Japanese food, but for some Chinese food and then some other foreign foods as well. This store here, when I first came to Japan, I actually didn't have a lot of money, so I would come here 
to buy clothes. Everything is like a thousand yen. Not everything, but like like piles of like clothes for a thousand yen. And I would go to my host family, they'd be like, hey, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going away now, I gotta buy some clothes. This is where I would go to buy clothes. Those were the good old days, no longer the days, but everything comes back in a circle. Next, we're gonna check out Tokyo Skytree. Take Ginza line to Asakusa station and transfer it to the Tobu Skytree line. So, I just got to Tokyo Skytree. Since it's so new, it's more of like a shopping mall area. There's lots of new stores around. Right behind me, there's like a Nitori and a Sizzler. Really like it. And then let's go walk through this way. For first time travelers, it might be easy to take a shuttle bus from Ueno Station. Asakusa is on the way, so if you're interested in towers, you can go there instead. You can check out my Asakusa video to see what it's like. So, as you can see behind me, there's actually a cool place for kids to play in the fountain on a hot summer's day. What else could you ask for? These kids are loving it. Look how close we are to Skytree. Look at there. Look how close we are. It's playing. Wow, Tokyo Skytree is like one of the biggest towers in all of the world. I can't say enough that this is a very, very new building with a lot of new shops. It's perfect for tourists that really want to do their shopping. They have everything from clothes to like desserts that you can buy for souvenirs. It's like a one-stop shop and you can go all the way top Skytree and get a great view. Lots of restaurants as well, so you're probably not gonna go hungry here. Next, we're gonna check out Meiji Jingu Shrine. Meiji Jingu Shrine open hours differ from month to month depending on the sunrise and sunset time. Winter hours are usually short so be sure to check out their website. So this is Meiji Jingu Shrine. As you can see behind me, there's a lot of people walking. You're gonna want to go during the week if possible, where it's not as busy as the weekends. All right, let's go check out what's inside. Do you hear the crazy loud cicadas in the background? That's the sound of a Japanese summer. I love it. But in other seasons, you'll only hear the peaceful sound of trees. So as you can see, it's very, very green here. And one thing though you need to be careful of is when you're walking here, it's quite a long walk from the entrance all the way to the shrine. So you're gonna wanna make sure to have the proper walking shoes. You don't wanna have any heels or anything like that because you're gonna get really, really tired. But look how green it is. It's like so amazing over here. It's so nice. Also, if you wanna know how to properly shrine or how to shrine here in Japan check out this video if you want to know more on how you should behave the manners of what you're supposed to do in a shrine so on your way you're gonna pass these things they look kind of like drums or something like those taiko drums but in fact they're barrels of sake made out of straw anyways something to note hope you enjoy so we're approaching the shrine we're getting a little bit closer now but it looks like there's actually a fork in the road let me show you so in this situation, what you're going to want to do is take a left and follow the gate because that will actually go in a full circle and this is actually the exit over here. So let's go that way. Yeah, this is the Temizia. Before you go in, it's very respectful if you wash your hands and rinse your mouth. Remember not to drink it. So at the time of this filming, the shrine is actually under construction. You'll see kind of like a tarp over the shrine itself. It may not be too interesting, but the construction is set to finish on this date. I think you should be good after this date. So behind me is where the shrine is. It's actually like a picture of the shrine and that's like scaffolding and some tarp that's been painted to look like the shrine itself. All right, so that concludes our part of Eiji Jingu Shrine. Time to go check out another place. Shopping time! Harajuku and Motosando are next to each other and walking distance from Meiji Jingu Shrine. No need to get on a train. What's really surprising is just how clean this area is. Like, there's like not any garbage anywhere. It's very, very clean and like tidy in this area. I really like it. Omoto Sando is filled with high fashion stores and cool cafes. To get to Harajuku, all you need to do is walk down the hill. Alright, so we're walking to Takeshi Dori right now. You see right behind me, we've made it. We're here. This street is super, super busy. There's just so many people. I'm not looking forward to going through here, but to show you guys what's up, I'm taking you through. Look at this crowd. Since it's like this, locals try to avoid Takeshi Dori, but it's a cool spot to check out anyway. 
Uh, so I don't come here very often just because it's just too busy. But to the tourists, maybe they would like saying this. But it's just a very young crowd with a lot of inexpensive goods. And so you might like enjoy that. But for me, it's kind of not my style. Hope you're hungry because we're gonna have an all-you-can-eat shabu shabu in Shibuya. To get to Shibuya, you can either walk about 15 minutes from here or hop on the Yamanote line. It's only one station away. My favorite budget shabu shabu restaurant, Nabizo, offers different types of courses based on what type of meat you like. Also, there are various soups and veggies to choose from. We had the basic Nabizo course, and for soup, we had the shio tonkotsu and sukiyaki. It's coming! If you still have energy, you should hit some bars and clubs in Shibuya. Oh, but don't forget to check out Shibuya Crossing before all is said and done. It's truly a cool sight to see. If you liked my recommendations, hit that thumbs up button. Also, let me know in the comment section what you're most interested in doing in Tokyo. And like always, if you want to see more of my adventures in Tokyo, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.